Pandora, the music streaming service, is mad that they're spending about half their revenue in royalty payments for the music stream from the site. And they're asking Congress to help them out by passing legislation to lower the royalty payments they dole out. On face value, it seems like a reasonable enough request. I mean, who wants to shell out half their revenue to other companies? But when I took a deeper look at this issue, what I found made me think about it in a different light. First, a bit of context. Pandora is lobbying Congress to support the Internet Radio Fairness Act. If passed, it could result in Pandora paying lower licensing fees to stream songs. Without getting too deep into the mechanics of the music industry, a performance royalty is what an artist is due when their music is played publicly. Restaurants and bars that play music, for instance, are required to pay royalty collectors such as ASCAP. In the digital realm, these fees are collected by SoundExchange. Pandora forked over $136 million in performance royalties to SoundExchange this past year. That's more than 50% of its gross revenue, while satellite streaming service SiriusXM paid a flat 8% of its revenue to artists. Both Pandora and SiriusXM have negotiated royalty rates, and SoundExchange feels that the rate that Pandora currently pays, about a tenth of a penny per song, is low enough. Why the huge disparity then? There are three other factors at play content, infrastructure, and advertising. Pandora streams primarily music. SiriusXM broadcasts a myriad of program types, ranging from music to comedy to sporting events. Since not all of their content is music, not all of their revenue is subject to being counted towards artist royalties. SiriusXM's lower rate begins to make sense. Consider also that Pandora runs locally on your computer and streams over the internet, an existing infrastructure. SiriusXM uses satellites that they launch into space, not to mention maintaining repeaters to help propagate the signal. SoundExchange also takes this overhead into account. But probably the most important difference is in their business models. SiriusXM has over 19 million paid subscribers. While their music streams are ad-free, most of their programming is advertiser-supported. Pandora also offers a paid subscription, which is ad-free, but the majority of their 52 million active listeners go with the free, nominally ad-supported route. Pandora's revenue is stifled by their need to keep the hourly commercial count low to preserve their user experience. Competitor Spotify, which is primarily a subscriber service, currently pays twice Pandora's rate, signifying that the current fees set by SoundExchange aren't entirely out of whack if the UK startup is holding its own. And Apple plans to enter the fray in the new year with their free ad-supported music streaming service. They're seeking to match Pandora's royalty payment rate with SoundExchange. So Pandora could be singing a sad song if the vote on the Internet Radio Fairness Act doesn't go their way. Apple could run the same amount of ads that Pandora inserts, lose money, and think absolutely nothing of it. It would just become another one of the many benefits to living in their ecosystem. Pandora is indeed a good friend to artists, independent and established alike. They did account for over 30% of the revenue SoundExchange collected for artists over this past year. Let's hope that fact will allow them enough bargaining power to reach some compromise in which they may continue to innovate in the music streaming arena and allow them time to develop a more sustainable business model. What's your favorite music streaming service? Do you have a subscription or do you go with the free ad-supported version? Let us know in the comments. For the record, I'm a Pandora moocher. For TFN, I'm Dale Chase.